Joining me now in Amsterdam is Noe van Holst, who is the Hydrogen Envoy at the Ministry of Economic Affairs in the Netherlands. Thanks very much for your time, Noe. Um, first of all, let's just start with the hydrogen market. Um, what is it now and how, how do you see it changing in the future? But sort of talk me through what the market is and, and yeah. the big areas. Well, the biggest market now is really in, uh, in industry, manufacturing mm -hmm. industry. You're talking about chemical industry, refineries, where this is uh, sometimes a byproduct and sometimes used in their own production process. So that is what we call gray hydrogen. It means that by the produ producing the hydrogen, CO2 is emitted. And uh, this is of course an issue, a problem. Um, so for the future, what you want to do when you move towards a more decarbonized economy, you want to try and basically green that gray hydrogen. Right. Yeah. Make it sustainable. So how do you do that? And is industry already trying to do that now? I think there is a, a growing momentum in industry, uh, certainly in the Netherlands, but also in the rest of Europe. Look at all the companies that are saying, we want to be climate neutral in 2050, like Thyssen Group and other big companies. So I think there is, there is a drive. How do you do it then? Is you do it either by adding CO2 um, CO2 um, storage, uh -huh. so CCUS as you call it, carbon capture, carbon capture utilization, yep. sometimes you can use it even for other purposes, but then what you cannot use you have to store underground, or you can even produce it from green electricity, from renewable energy. And that of course is kind of the holy grail, the ultimate goal, where you can basically um, have entirely sustainable uh, CO2-free hydrogen uh, production and utilization. And that is the one that's termed as green hydrogen. That's green hydrogen, exactly. And, and the blue is the one where it produces carbon, which you are then trying to capture, utilize and, and store. Exactly. So that's then uh, what they call uh, blue hydrogen. So yeah. we have blue hydrogen and green hydrogen. They can both be sort of kept under the umbrella of what we call clean hydrogen, mm. low carbon hydrogen. So that is going to be a, a big challenge for industry, but it's not only industry. You're also talking about utilization of clean hydrogen for transportation, mm -hmm. particularly the heavy duty transportation. So for cars, certainly short distances, electric vehicle batteries is already quite popular and is growing but if you talk about longer distance fleet cars like taxis but particularly also the heavy duty transportation like trucks buses trains ships and ultimately even planes hydrogen clean hydrogen can be um, a really good application. But surely at the moment there's absolutely none of that infrastructure that's in, that's in place. Absolutely right. So it is really starting. So we see, we do have the first applications. You do have hydrogen cars already on the road. You do have hydrogen buses. You even have it in London, as I saw recently. You have trains, the first trains, but it's not yet large scale. So we need the scaling up and we need also the cost to go down because it's still relatively expensive. So the big challenge is how do we scale up? How do we get the cost down to have widespread application of clean hydrogen? But surely also your big challenge is trying to get investors to look at this when actually they could very easily say, look, there's, a, there's only a few, it's a bit untried and a bit untested or maybe just in the testing situation, when actually let's go and invest in your, your pure renewables, your solar. Absolutely, absolutely. But I mean, it's a bit like, you know, the same was, was true uh, maybe 20 years ago in, in renewable electricity, in wind offshore or in, in solar energy. So there we have seen this scaling up and the cost coming down. So I think if we do the smart policies, if we yeah. design the smart policies, we can achieve that scaling up and cost going down. So. Government has a role to play, designing the right policies, but also, of course, the financial sector needs to get involved, investment funds need to get involved, pension funds, etc. And this is sort of all happening at the same time. 
all these discussions on how are we going to make this happen. Because we all know we need it, ultimately, to achieve climate neutrality in 2050, which many people, many countries, many companies want. But we need to make it happen, and it's not going to be easy. So we need to overcome a lot of those hurdles. Yeah, indeed, because you talk about policy as well. I mean, you talk about solar. Well, that was that was the policy shift that would have made that happen. Yes. And you almost wonder when you look at somewhere like um, well, Dutch policies trying to get homes off the gas grid. Yeah. And, and, and that's being rolled out very quickly. Environmental groups say it should be rolled out even quicker, but it is still being rolled out quickly. So it, it, you know, it may well feel to some people that actually hydrogen's missed the boat on this one because homes will be off, off the, the grid. So how do you counter that? Well, I think it's going to take a long time. So I think hydrogen will also be part of that, of that uh, answer. And I think you're seeing that in the UK, where very interesting projects are being uh, designed indeed to move households to hydrogen mm -hmm. for heating. So I think that will be a, a good example for us to follow and to see what we can learn from that. But again, we see the main applications really in the, the really very difficult sectors for which very few alternatives exist. Industry, heavy duty transportation, and also storage. Seasonal yeah. storage of energy is very hard to do. You cannot do that all with batteries. Incredibly difficult, incredibly high volumes you need, and uh, very expensive. So again, there, hydrogen, is going to be uh, part of the solution. Yeah, but how is industry reacting to that? I mean, you know, you, you go to a big industrial plant and say, actually, do you know what? We'd love you to consider switching to hydrogen. I mean, what's the response? But it's, it's, it's actually coming the other way around in terms of there is a lot of initiatives, you know, from refineries who are saying, listen, you know, we need, we know that we need to change. So can we, can we look and can we, you know, design the projects so that we can start moving and that we can start decarbonizing through hydrogen. So actually in the port of Rotterdam, for instance, we have very big project, pilot project, which we are looking at at the moment, how to make that happen, where refineries are using the hydrogen, uh, blue hydrogen in this case, to, uh, to help them decarbonize. This is a, as a quick final thought. I know you're not talking about putting it into or so much into domestic properties or, or domestic travel. You're, you're talking about industry, but there still needs to be public education. And I wonder just how much you're up against when you have quite simply three different types and getting that education, that message out there so that a public doesn't immediately see it as, as something which is a carbon producer and understands the, the distinction. Absolutely true. Um, I think that's a, a critical element of the of the equation. So we need to uh, we need to work on that. Um, uh, and I think uh, academics, um, uh, other um, independent experts can play a, a big role there, and are playing already a big role. Um, and I think we need, uh, you know, what we are pushing for also, you know, a lot of international cooperation, so that you know not. All the countries do it on their own because if we all do it, if Netherlands only does their own thing, the UK does that, Germany, France, you know, we we know that it's going to be uh, much slower than it otherwise would mm. be and much more costly. We all need to be very cost conscious, you know, the cost of the whole energy system is a big topic in every country of political debate. So we need to be smart also in, in cooperating and in, in, in telling everybody if we want to have cost-effective energy transition longer term, clean hydrogen needs to be part of that equation. Uh, it's been very interesting talking to you and indeed we'll have to see how the next, the next bit of months or years ahead pans out as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you.